So I have to invite uh, Magdalena Novakovska, Dr. and Mal Dr. Malgoras Nes. Sorry, I'm not able to. So I have to learn about this. There we go. I mean, the no worry, Malgorzata Mileszczyk. <laughs> Lake Grid Dwellings of the West Vault Borough Culture, the story of research and researchers, the case of a Lake Pilakno in Northeast Poland. Please proceed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to invite you to the north uh, east of Poland now. The area of northeast of Poland until Second World War, the area of East Prussia. This is area well known as a uh, area of land of the 1000 lakes. In the second half of the first millennium, it was inhabited by the population of uh, the so-called West Baltic Baroque culture uh, with the presence of two kinds of settlements. The first one, so-called open settlement type, uh, the second group, so-called defensive settlement, the presence of the unique artificial island intentionally located in the shallow lake uh, base. The topic of lake settlements has been an important research matter since the structures of this kind were discovered for the first time in the 19th century. Only a decade after Ferdinand Keller's uh, stealing publication, the Falbauten, were recognized in the region of East Baltic lakelands, formerly East Prussia. As a result, uh, sorry, as a result of uh, engineering works, construction of a mill and dam in proximity of Orzesz, the water level in the lakes increased significantly. In the nearby fields ended flooded, which caused an ag agriculture disaster. Heavy drainage works were taken to deal with the problem, so effective that the eventually the uh, water not only returned to its previous boundaries, but also left uh, many new areas completely dried. Plenty of ancient objects of both human and natural origins emerged. emerged. The hills um, the hills abounding in pottery shreds and bones, sometimes also bronze and iron objects, with wooden and stone enhancements, were at first recognized by local antiquarians of the former East Prussia. In the beginning, the issue was studied by Johannes Heideck from uh, Prussia Museum, uh, from uh, Prussia Antiquarian Society, who unfortunately wrongly defined the type of sites as a Falbauten, palafits or pie dwelling causing uh, confusion in that matter in the decades to come. But he had an excellent uh, results uh, of excavation. For example, in the part of dried Ozzes Lake, Arizze, the old name, conducted from 1873 to 1876, he discovered settlement covering nearly 240 square meters, along with the 60 meters wooden bridge, palisade and the residues of five houses. During the research, he acquired many fragments of ceramic vessels, metal and organic artifacts. This type of settlement is called, uh, called lake and grid. The dwellings have been built by placing a wooden grid at the bottom of a shallow bay near the shore and forcing with the soil, weighing down with stones and then constructing the platform on it as base uh, for houses. Um, Heideck in next years conducted research on many lake grid dwellings such as Bogachevo, Szymonka, Arklite. Each time during the research, he, uh, the perfect documentation was carried out from the location of position of sites, drawings of plants and profiles of wooden structures to the descriptions and documentation of artifacts obtained during the research. The result of excavation uh, were published in periodicalis by antiquarian associations. In 1909, a full monograph, Falbauten in Ostpreußen, in periodical Siedenberichte der Altertumgesellschaft Prussia, was published by Heideck. Another text, very important for us, was published in 1933 by, by Karl Otto Rossius, contains not only the records from lake dwelling research from more than 20 years of golden age of Prussian archaeology, but also some information about the newly discovered sites. Absolutely, the most important merit of Otto Rossius is the publication of the map of which he marked the location of 40 uh, lake, grid, uh, lake grid dwellings. Originals of the documentation and all artifacts were delivered to the Prussian Museum in Königsberg, uh, the central museum for whole East uh, Prussia region. 
In the end of August in uh, 1944, the Königsberg Schloss, it's in Castle, uh, where the Prussian Museum was located, was bumped by Royal Air Force. The collection of artifacts and files was dispersed through various museums for a long time. A large part of the collection was considered missing. We are still working on restoring the archaeology of East Prussia. Now, Małgosia, welcome. <laughs> I just need a second to turn on my presentation. OK. Just a moment. OK, it should be on in a second. Great. You should already see it. It's downloaded and uh, no time for pleasantries. Hereby I introduce you to the very important uh, lake grid dwelling for us. Uh, important because it's a subject to our grant uh, um, financed by National Science Center in Poland. The name of the site is Rybno Lake Piwakno and uh, the publication lately mentioned by Magda by Karl Otto Rosius from 1933, a local forester who discovered um, the site, uh, acquired some artifacts and sent them to Königsberg. Uh, Rosius, apart from the location of the uh, of the site mentions also uh, five vessels, the quern and the um, the fishing weight, and that's all that happened to this site before the war. After the war, this um, uh, this region ended up within the borders of Poland, and Polish archaeologists became uh, interested in it. Uh, mainly, Włodzimierz Antoniewicz, the researcher from the State Museum in Warsaw, State Archaeological Museum in Warsaw, who in 1952 contacted Frederick Kuli this um, discoverer of the, this, this forestman who discovered the site and acquired two vessels uh, from him, which you can see here from his publication. Um, and and uh, what is worth mentioning in here that uh, is that after the war, we slowly get rid of this um, of this problem of fallout and so the wrong definition. And uh, already Antoniewicz started calling those sites on water dwellings or lake dwellings. His report was published in 1950 along with those two vessels, which later I discovered in during my um, my, my research in the um, um, museum, uh, Varmia and Prussia Museum and uh, sorry, Varmia and Mazuria Museum in Olsztyn. Uh, second verification of the same uh, happened in 1959 by a researcher from the same museum, Jan uh, Dombrowski. Unfortunately, we are back with the problem of pile dwellings and the report of this uh, of this research uh, was published in English, so we can all always uh, read it uh, because all the others are in uh, most of the others are in Poland. Unfortunately, uh, in this publication, this wonderful map is published, by the way, with the mistake in the name of the of the site. It's called Lake Piwaki instead of Lake Piwakno in here, but um, uh, no drawings, no photographies of artifacts. But the researcher says that uh, during the underwater research, because divers from diving uh, Warsaw Diving Club have, have participated in the research, they acquired plates, big bellied and ovoid pots, cups, dishes, ladles and miniature vessels. So that sounds like a pretty nice collection. Unfortunately, we don't know right now where it's being held. We don't have any photographies and uh, pictures. And after those two, um, um, uh, two verifications, first Polish systematic underwater uh, excavations happened. 1961-1962, um, uh, the excavation by uh, Polish State Archaeological Museum in Warsaw and Polish Academy of Sciences published in those four, four reports, which you can see on the left side, one in English. So yet again, you can uh, check it on by yourself. Unfortunately, uh, they definitely felt like uh, this. There will be continuation to this um, to this research, be, uh, and and in those reports, it's uh, the main focus is on methods of research, not artifacts themselves. Uh, what is more, it's also because uh, the definitions and typologies of West Baltic cultures were uh, uh, were elaborated in the uh, 70s by Professor Wuciał Kulic, so a decade after this research. Uh, I told you that we don't know where the artifacts from 1959 are. And by the way, during my query in the museum, the archives of Museum of Varmia and Mazuria in Olsztyn, I uh, discovered that on the catalog uh, cards, there is sometimes the information that the, arc, uh, the, the artifact has been acquired in 1959, uh, but it's obviously a mistake because the same artifact, and that's not the only case, just um, uh, just what, what I'm showing you here, has been also published in those reports from 1961, 1962. So still no information where the artifacts from 59 are. 
But during my query in the archives of Museum of Varmia and Mazuria, I also discovered the magic box. This magic bo box was supposed to be the photos from the um, uh, campaign, archaeological campaign at the nearby boroughs of the same name. But in fact, it contained nearly 200, 200 archive photographies. Some of them extraordinary as this one, archive photographies from this research in the 60s. Uh, this photography uh, is a picture showing the discoverer of the site, so uh, Frederick uh, Kulik, visiting, paying the visit to the archaeologists in the 60s. Uh, here you have some other samples, so those are wonderful unpublished photos of men, of equipment, both archaeological and uh, diving equipment, and of the methods used in the 60s. So great discovery also, uh, nobody has seen it, uh, those, those, uh, those photos for like 50 years. Uh, before we started our project, this site has been visited one more time by the researchers from Torun, right now the professors of archaeology, then it was their student project, the aim of which was to verify the state of preservation of the site. They actually discovered the site is much bigger than it was stated as a result of the, um, uh, of the, of the research in the 60s and also acquired some artifacts which probably are in Torun right now, pretty hard to get to them. And in the magic box, there were also these two wonderful pictures. They were described as photographies of artifacts from Prussian Museum. Uh, you can see that uh, some of the artifacts are on both um, on both photos, but there are more than five vessels and uh, quern and and uh, fishing weight mentioned by Rossius. And a part of our uh, grant is also to go to uh, Berlin, where the artifacts from Prussian Museum were partly stored, uh, and to dive into um, archives and to dive into in between the artifacts. Hopefully, we will uh, discover some of those artifacts, which are uh, you can see that on the uh, on the pottery the name Reben is being written. And one of the artifacts, which you can see on the left side on the top floor in the middle, has found its way some somehow to the museum in Olsten, and it's already uh, documented. Uh, one last thing, that's a map elaborated by our colleague Agata Wisniewska. All the squares which are black and white are uh, lake grid dwellings which were reported. So after we finish our grant in Rybno, there is a lot of work for us to, uh, to, uh, to follow. Uh, and in our in our last slide, I would like to show you two pictures. On the right side, there is a model of, of uh, lake grid dwellings, of course, quite imaginative. Uh, it is based on Haydex research from before the century. This is one of few models which were proposed during the century of research. And um, it is doing uh, well in the museum in Pish uh, at Mazuria. And um, because uh, it's giving uh, a word to, to popularization of this topic because this phenomenon is not that known uh, for the um, even local inhabitants and we really want to change it. And on the left side, our favorite photography from the magic box, underwater archaeology in Poland in the 60s, and I leave you with it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your presentation, Dr. Milesiewicz and Dr. Nowakowska.